Collingwood was, was always reasonably prosperous. Uh, it was dominated around some big manufacturing plants, but the shipyard at the time was the biggest. Generally, all the people of my generation sort of benefited from that. Somebody now, starting out, may not have that same luxury. Really a unique place. I don't think you see many places like that now. You know, you don't always appreciate what you've got until it's gone. They blew that big whistle every time at noon and quitting time. Uh, you could hear it all over town. That sound resonated throughout the entire area. You could hear it up on top of Blue Mountain. You could hear it everywhere in town. So it kind of dictated the life in Collingwood and you know the, the progress throughout the day. The office workers like myself, we would leave at 4.30, but the whole town seemed to move around the steam whistles. So no matter where you were in town, you knew what time it was eventually because you'd hear the steam whistles. And, uh, and when the guys left at the end of their shift, four o'clock, the police would come and stop traffic so that they could come out because there'd be like two, 250 guys on bikes and they would just head across First Street. So it was really a funny, odd thing. You, you would never see it now today, but the shipyard seemed to get away with things that are hard to believe now. Uh, the, the town really rotated around uh, the shipyard and, and uh, vice versa. It was, it was fun growing up in this town. There's lots to do. It's ski hills, it's skating, in wintertime hockey, baseball in the summertime, golf. We had a good time as kids growing up. For me, it was great. Uh, I mean, I was very fortunate. My mom's side of the family, she was probably fifth generation, you know, so we're local. It was always good times. Always nice to go down and look at the big boats down there. I started the shipyard in August of 1959. I was uh, 15 years old at the time when I went in there and started passing rivets. The work that I did on the, in the yard when I first started my apprenticeship, I worked in the, in the they called it the engineering department. Um, anything that powered the ship was really our primary stuff. Lots of pipes and pumps, mechanical components. I was a passer boy for at the start, and then I got laid off and left, and then I come back and got in the yard again. And from '72, '86, I was in the blacksmith shop. When I joined, uh, the shipyard already had a, a had a long-standing reputation in the community. Collingwood kind of identified itself with the shipyard, and the shipyard was Collingwood. Collingwood was the shipyard. It was actually the largest employer in Collingwood when I started in the shipyards. And uh, times there was up to 800 to 900 people working in there. To the economy itself, the shipyard was imperative. Um, not only did they employ many people from Collingwood in the local area, but also businesses on our main street. Their success was intricately tied to the shipyard's operation. You know, I kind of laugh now when new businesses say they can't get the young workers anymore. The shipyard thrived on it. We had welders, electricians, pipe fitters, uh, carpenters, and apprentices galore. So it was just this huge, big learning cauldron of, of skilled workers that, uh, you know, you just don't see anymore. Some people worked there their whole career. You know, I know people that started at the shipyard and left at the shipyard. So, you know, you, you saw grandfathers, fathers and sons, daughters that worked at that place. You know, there was generations, whole families, you know, that worked there. The first ship I worked on it was called the Murray Bay, it was all riveted, and it was 700 and 
29 feet long, I believe it was. The smallest one I think that I ever worked on was the Chichimon. It's sitting in the harbor in Owen Sound right now. I think the first one that uh, I worked on was uh, hull 223. So you got to go out, stay on the ship for the entire day, test it, and then commission it and hand it over, deliver it to the customer. So that was a big thing for me. It was exciting. You got to do a lot of things you wouldn't do in the drawing office. Well, side launch was, I guess, left over from uh, the old days when they would build a ship up on dry land, and then they had the slipways so that it would, they would hold it, bring it up onto the, onto the slipways, basically cut the chains and, and it would slide into the water. And those, these ships were 730 feet long and 75 feet wide, and by the time they were ready to launch, they were probably about 10,000 tons and they wanted to move it sideways from the building berth, which was only 105 feet wide. So a lot of people wanted to see how that was done. <laughs> and when it did launch, it came moved sideways, and then it finally hit the water, and it would hit with a real wave coming off of it. It's quite a spectacle to see. You ever seen 27,000 tons drop into the water? <laughs> Once she started to go, though, there was no stopping her. pier down there would be lined with people. The shipyard was full of people. They let the people right into the yard to watch them. It really was something spectacular to the point where, you know, businesses on the main street would close. Literally anywhere you could, could get a, a shot of it, you'd be watching. I don't know why they were popular. They were fun to watch. <laughs> a lot of people got wet. It is with considerable uh, regret that I am here today to announce formally the permanent closing of the Collingwood Shipyard. The closure of the shipyard was devastating. Um, you know, if you think about potentially a thousand people working at the shipyard and how, you know, in a population of potentially 7,000, how that would affect the local economy, it's enormous. There was talk every year the yard was going to close, the yard was going to close, and we didn't really believe it when they, when they did close. It was kind of a shock to everybody. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was 45, and that's not a great age to be out looking for work. When it finally closed, I believe I was working for a Navy project in Ottawa. I always thought I'd get called back to the shipyard, and then when we heard officially it was closing and you got your severance and got, you know, your, your Canada Steamship Line pension in the, in the mail and saying, you're done. That's when it hit home. But uh, like I say, I always thought I was coming back, but uh, never did set foot in the shipyard again. I was a, an apprentice in the drawing office and the very sh first ship that I worked on was called the English River. Then after that, when the shipyard closed, the very last ship that came in to pick up machinery to take someplace else because of the closure of the shipyard was the English River. <laughs> the Canadian government stopped providing subsidies for Canadian shipyards. Um, also, the cost of building things locally versus overseas was starting to become a factor. It was, in many cases, cheaper to outsource things. And unfortunately, our location on Georgian Bay we were already kind of like a body of water removed from, from the Great Lakes, so we're not right on Lake Huron. We're on Georgian Bay, so there's a little bit of a lag there in, in travel time. 
and then apparently there also wasn't any upcoming contracts for the shipyard. So all of those things kind of led to the, the perfect storm to, to cause the shipyard's closure. And as far as the town was concerned, it was uh, a lot of unemployment created by that. A lot of families, they uh, didn't know where they were going to go. There was a lot of people trying to find work and a lot of people moved. I have friends who just walked away from their houses, closed the doors and away they went. I think the federal government really dropped the ball on the importance of shipbuilding in Canada. They just didn't appreciate it enough. But then after that, they still wanted to, they needed to do something to get people here. And it sort of turned into a tourist town. Which they're pretty successful at. The biggest tourist attraction around here would be the, probably the ski hills in the winter time. Since there's been skiing, there's been people coming to the area to ski. So I think it's just kind of, you know, kind of grasping onto that idea of Collingwood as a Four Seasons getaway. And you can see people in Toronto who retire, they're looking for a place to go, that, that a lot of stuff that they want to do, skiing, hiking, boating, golf. It's all here. I think that what attracts a lot of people to Collingwood is the history of the area. You know, we have a lovely downtown that's largely been preserved. It's a designated heritage district. And, um, you know, those buildings that are preserved there, they largely date to the 1920s from the era that the shipyards, you know, kind of was in its, one of its heydays. Even though the shipyard's gone, I think there is, that is part of Collingwood's appeal because that was part of our past. Yeah, I, I love it here. It was a good life, Collingwood. I've worked away and I've always come back. We got a paycheck at the end of the week, so I guess we're, we're doing some good anyway. I got more from being at the shipyard than I would say I contributed because it set me up for my working career. But, uh, yeah, the, the town fell it for a while, but we rebounded. We're Canadians. Thank you.